Hello everybody and welcome back to Tawny Northeastern and a new project is about to start. Uh, before we get stuck in I would just like to say thank you very much for everybody who commented on the last video. Um, I'm very much taken aback um, that I still have a lot of interest regarding the building of this layout. Um, so thank you very much for that. So um, as you can see there's absolutely nothing moving on the layout at the moment because it's all been disconnected. As you can see by the piece of timber there hanging just down from underneath the baseboard um, there used to be a shelf supporting the ecos here. Well that has now been removed And as you can see, I have put in a retaining wall from the bridge all the way down to the station there. Okay, there's two reasons why I have put in this um, retaining wall. One is to tidy up the corner of the layout here. And two is because once this control panel is made up it could clash up against the layout. Right, as you can see I have made this stand which is going to support the shelf that was removed from over there where I showed you earlier which is going to be sitting on the lower rail runners as you can see, and the main control panel is going to sit on those two bearers on the top here. There and there. Um, I have added casters to the base of this to allow it to move around, um, just in case I need to reach the sockets there and my power supplies which are down there on the shelf. Um, there'll be a little bit of movement in the cables to allow me to do this. So, it's going to be quite a big control panel. It's going to be a, a metre by 500 mils, so you're more or less saying it's going to be 4 foot by 2 foot. Quite a big panel. So this is what I did last weekend, I built this. So all I've got to do now is add the shelf, which the Ecos sat on, and then build the actual panel that sits on the top. So I'll make a start on that. Right, as you can see, I have added the shelf, and it just slides in and out. I've got to put some stoppers on the back um, to stop it falling out the back. So what I'll do is I'll screw a block onto here and when it hits this edge it'll stop it going back that way and it'll stop it also from tipping up because at the moment it tips up. So I shall do that. Okay I have fitted the blocks now uh, which will stop the shelf tipping up and also acts as a stop when it goes all the way back when that edge hits that edge. Um, but before I did that I put some wax on the runners to make them nice and slippery um, just for ease pulling this forwards and it slips in and out quite easy now. So now that's done. The bottom half of the control panel is just sitting on the stand and it's quite a big control panel now, now that I've just offered it up. Um, it'll be in two halves so all the electronics will sit on this bit and the top half will have a hinge and stay on it so that I can lift it up and work on both top and bottom um, 
as I'm working on it. Right, so the next thing to do is to screw this down onto the stand onto these runners. Right, so I'm going to more or less copy um, what I've done here with the Simon side storage sidings for the fiddle yard there. So I'm more or less going to copy this so when I lift up the lid inside you'll see all the um, control cables going to the switches. So I'm just going to more or less copy what I've done here. Right, I have now fixed the bottom half of the control panel in place and I've also added a strengthening bar in the center and I've drilled out six 40mm holes for the cables to come through. So we're getting there. Um, I do apologize for the mess. But when you stand back, it's taken up a massive amount of room. Okay, we'll have one last look at the actual support before we um, think about putting the top half of the control panel on. As you can see, I've used um, rubber mounted casters for the base. Um, as I explained before, it's just to allow a little movement, not a lot of movement. And we have an upright on both sides with a double strengthening cross member um, to give it some extra support from side to side and then we have the runners with the shelf on which should go backwards and forwards like so so the next job is to fix the top panel onto the bottom of half of the control panel Right, it took me a while, but as you can see, I have now fitted the top of the control panel. I have actually screwed the perspex onto the top frame, um, rather than um, just leaving the perspex as it is, because once you've fitted all the switches on here, it's going to be quite a heavy um, control panel. You see, I have a mechanical stop which keeps the lid up while I'm working on the switches and all the cables um, which will go to terminal blocks and all the other, um, other bits and pieces. So, it took me most of the weekend to do. I have placed my ECOS on the shelf on the bottom so I can't wait to do the electrics now. Um, I've just used some butt hinges on the back. You can probably see one there. Uh, there's three along the back, which is more than enough um, for what I need. Okay, one last look before we go, and this just shows you how big the control panel is compared to the layout. Right, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen and uh, we'll catch you again next week when it gets just a little bit more interesting when the track plan gets put onto the control panel ready for the switches. Okay, see you again next time. Bye for now. Bye.